Today, I'm gonna really quickly show you guys how you can create this shatter effect for your motion graphics and after effects. Let's go. My name is Devin Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned in the title, today I'm gonna to show you really quickly how you can create this shatter effect for your motion graphs or text or any other video effects that you wanna do. It's a really fun, underrated way to just spice up your motion graphics and after effects, and it's really simple to recreate. Today, all you've been needing is after effects, no plugins at all required, so it's really simple. And also really quickly, I just wanna let you know if you're looking to spice up your motion graphics effects or your title cards for your video projects or whatever you're working on, we just dropped our essential film titles preset packs for Premiere Pro and after effects it's really simple to use you literally just drag and drop and has a bunch of professionally designed titles for your motion graphics or other projects you're working on so definitely make sure to check out the link in the description at 11percent.net and if you use this promo code right here you can get an exclusive 40 percent off your first purchase 40 percent guys you're you're basically robbing me at this point but i just want to let you know because this effect that we're working with today does deal with like title cards and motion graphics also one last thing we are growing our discord community of video editors so if you want to join our community we're throwing game nights competitions we're giving away a crap ton of prizes there. Make sure to check out the link in the description. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right, guys, so now that we're finally inside of After Effects, as you can see right here, we got this pink diamond, which by the way, have any of y'all heard pink tape yet? If you did, that it was me. I'm just kidding, bro. Make sure you obviously have like a transparent image of your file. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna search for the shatter effect. So right here, shat. We're gonna go ahead and apply the shatter effect to our subject. So I'm gonna apply it to our diamond. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the view from wire plus frame forces to rendered. Ta-da! If you play it out, you can see our object just explodes into a nice load of bricks. He's shitting bricks. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the drop down on shape and you're gonna change the pattern from bricks to whatever best fits your object. So for ours, it's a diamond, so glass would best fit ours. And you can see now if you play it out, voila, we have a nice looking glass explosion. And if that's what you're looking for already in your effect, perfect, there you go, there you have it. One thing to keep in mind is that whatever the dimension size of you know your file that you're working with, that's where the frame edges are gonna end. So my diamond right here, unfortunately, it was like only a one by one square format. So you can see some of the pieces are just like clipping off on the edge, but you know, whatever, for next time. And if you like this effect already, you can also just go ahead and adjust a few factors like the position of where you want the initial like impact to occur. So you can have like the impact occur at like the bottom of the shape or whatever, or the top, and you can just change the force one position. And it's, it's pretty cool, honestly. And now that we have the basic shatter out the way, it's all pretty cool, but let's say I just want this like right side over here to just break apart and snap into just a bunch of different shards. How are we gonna do that? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. So we're gonna create a new solid and make sure you can just name this solid like mask one. The one thing you have to make sure is that this is a white solid. So set the color to white and ta-da, we have a nice solid. We can go ahead and just turn off the visibility for it for now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our pen tool and just go ahead and draw a very rough mask of like the edge area that you want to crack away, get destroyed and shattered. And then what you're gonna do is once you have that mask done, you're gonna come back to your object right here. And then we are going to hit the drop down on gradient. And then we're gonna change the gradient layer to mask one or whatever that new solid you just created is named. And then we're gonna change the source from source to effects and masks. And now you can see if you play this out, nothing happens. Why? Because we have to change the shatter threshold to 1%. Hit okay and voila, there you can see, now we have a nice shatter. It's pretty cool, honestly, if you ask me. If some areas are like weird like this, like we have this little corner right here that just some reason did not break away, you can just go ahead and increase the number of repetitions and that should just create like a different look, maybe something more workable with. So right here, we have a nice shatter in the same area, but still just a little bit different. Now it's time to go ahead and mess with some of the physics where you can just go ahead and create some different looks. So let's say, what if I wanna speed up the speed of the explosion? I just wanted to be really fast well don't worry you can just of course come over here to the rotation speed i would recommend not increasing this anything above 0.4 because after that stuff just gets weird and then i would say increase the randomness randomness basically affects like how far the pieces fly out something like 0.5 and let's see there you go you can already see we have a little bit more like fast movement but of course the impact and the coolness of the effects always comes with the camera shakes and all the extra stuff that you add on after so remember if you're creating this effect never leave it at this this, this is bare basic work done. And then after that, you can go ahead and add all your camera shakes and 
impacts that make it really add that level of visual effects. Because what is visual effects at the end of the day? Visual effects is illusion. And if you, illusion is basically just creating a sense of reality and tricking your brain that something is real. So you have to, you seriously have to go in and add all those extra elements such as camera shake, lighting, impact, and make the video feel as if it's real and give it those real elements of physics to, to sell your effect. Because that's what creates good visual effects at the end of the day. God, I was spitting facts right there. So let's say maybe this object is like on a table and it's laying down and we don't want these little shards to fall down. We can of course just go ahead and turn off the gravity. So I'm just gonna change the gravity to zero and you'll see that like they just go off in those directions forever. And let's say if we want to do like some slow motion stuff. So we can go ahead and increase the viscosity up to like 0.5 maybe. Let's try that. And viscosity kind of just makes things feel like slow-mo. Like that, that's pretty cool. Like it looks like a... I don't know, I don't know. Now that we have everything out the way, let's go ahead and add some real spices. Spice it up, let's spice it up, guys. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a nice glow to this because this looks mid. So I'm gonna use a sapphire glow. If you don't have sapphire glow, just use the After Effects glow right here. Sapphire glow is just superior, as you can see. Look at that, beautiful. I'm gonna change the glow color to like a nice light pink so it matches the diamond itself. And I'm gonna change the brightness down just a tad bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a nice flicker to it using the sapphire flicker. If you don't have sapphire flicker, you're out of luck because sapphire flicker is beast. There you go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of these by holding shift, right click them and pre-compose them into a nice pre-compose. I'm just gonna call this diamond. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add a nice camera shake, of course, which I'm gonna use the sapphire shake. Again, I'm sorry, I'm a sapphire whore today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been using sapphire a lot today. Sapphire is, is just insane. If you don't have it, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I'll just go ahead and create some keyframes at the moments of impact. So like this amplitude right here, I'm gonna increase to 1.3. I'm gonna hit a keyframe right there. And then right before it, I'm gonna set it to zero. And then right after it, I'm gonna set it to zero again. And then that way we have this nice like shake kind of. Oh, almost forgot. You have to add the motion blur. Almost forgot. There you go. That looks a lot more real than just like a standard shake. And like I said, there's just so many levels that you can go into this. So I definitely recommend you just like mess around with these settings and effects. It's really just super fun. So mess around with it, have fun, you know, create some cool stuff going on. You know, just go ahead and create some cool stuff. Maybe I might add like a zoom in effect. So mess around with effects. Don't copy this tutorial exactly down to the nitty gritty details. Create some cool stuff. Here's the final result of me just editing and messing around with it for a couple more hours. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you again so much for watching. If you found any value or help from this video, really please, if you could just smash the like button and hit subscribe for me. It's free, all this content is free, so really it means a lot to me and this channel. Make sure to check out 11percent.net if you're interested in that title preset pack or any other preset packs that we have. We have like Chrome 3 VFX and artificial camera shake presets, so there's a bunch of crazy stuff there. Make sure to check out the link at 11percent.net. I really dedicate a lot of effort and time in just building preset packs that will just help speed up your editing work flow and just make your overall effects look a lot better without you having to put in all that time and effort yourself. So make sure to check out the link in the description. Really means a lot. Once again, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below for what tutorial you'd like to see from us next and we'll see you guys.